Jake, you should get that thing where you have a harmonica too with the neck. We're on. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to our unplugged New Year's Day service. Uh, I'm guessing that most, hopefully, uh, most of us are watching online. So uh, is it that camera over here? We'll say uh, Happy New Year to you and thank you for joining us from your living room or kitchen or wherever you're viewing. And uh, for those of you who showed up in person, um, glad you came and uh, you, you should have a fairly normal in-person experience, although um, it, this is condensed, unplugged, we're a little bit more laid back, we're, um, you know, sitting in high backs, Cliff's got his coffee, and uh, we only have one musician. Uh, Jake, thanks for, for uh, playing today. Yeah. And we try to keep uh, this a volunteer-free morning just to give everybody a chance to rest and un unwind before we head into an awesome 2023. I'm but so we half of our volunteers show up anyway. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did need some volunteers, um, and so we say thanks to uh, Paul who pulled out the signs, and, we, and our, our AV, Hugh and Peter, and Eric doing the uh, sound. So uh, thanks, guys, for, for volunteering, even when you're, there was no volunteers. Cheers. And so I would like to uh, just open us in a word of prayer, and then Jake's going to lead us in a song. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for uh, allowing us the strength and the um, uh, life to uh, persevere and make it through a 2022. And for some people, it was a great year. And for some people, they can't wait to begin 2023. And so... As we turn the, the page from one year to the next, in the marking of Jan 1, I pray that you would give us the sense that there are new possibilities, there are new opportunities. The old things that, that kept us down don't have to keep us down any longer, and the new things that are springing up, we can take hold of. Um, I pray that you use this service as a catalyst for that this year. We say thank you for how you work in our life. Um, in the in the joy and in the pain, in the plenty and in the lack, you are always there um, with us, comforting us, guiding us, strengthening us. Um, and so we say thank you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Go on, lay your troubles down. Set your feet on solid ground. Peace deep as I have found. I want to follow you. Come on, all you weak and weary. Come round now if you can hear me. Poor, sick, and God fearing. I want to follow you. I said, I want to follow you. I leave all of your trouble. Leave all of your sorrow, sit down in your burden, come on and follow. And come on, heavy laden, and don't wait for the morrow. Come on, my sister, come on and follow. Go on, leave your worries too. Not a bit of good they do. And there's a word that's coming through. Go on and leave your worries too. So I call your name in the middle of the night. I want to know, can you hear my cry? The June heat and moonlight. And I want to follow you. I said, I want to follow you. I leave all of your trouble. Leave all of your sorrow, set down your burden, come on and follow. And come on, heavy laden, and don't wait for tomorrow. Come on, my sister, come on and follow. Set your burden down. 
said your burdens down. Said your burdens down. Said your burdens down. And leave all of your trouble. Leave all of your sorrow. Sit down in your burden. Come on and follow. And come on, heavy laden. And don't wait for tomorrow. Come on, my brother. Come on and follow. And come on, my brother. Come on and follow. Thank you, Jake. And uh, for those of you who are just joining us now online, uh, welcome. And for those of you who, who are just coming in now, welcome. You're probably realizing you're experiencing something a little different, our Unplugged Jan 1. Um, I plan on doing this every seven years when Sunday yeah. hits January 1. And I, I love it already. And uh, so I'll, I'll, um, a nearly volunteer-free, laid-back way to start the new year right. And so... Uh, um, we have uh, uh, just a song at the beginning, a song at the end, and then a three-panel discussion. And so um, hopefully oh boy. these guys knew that it wasn't <laughs> supposed to be a whole sermon, so hopefully you won't hear our three whole, whole sermons and just uh, a, a sermon discussion. No danger yeah. of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I see a lot of notes up here. Don't There's worry. multiple pages. I'm just so. trying to be ready to correct you guys. <laughs> <laughs> just help out. <laughs> And so uh, what Smart. we wanted to do is just help us take a look at our faith at this moment in time where we're saying goodbye to 2022 and hello to 2023 and look specifically at um, things that, hey, we got an opportunity, this artificial opportunity, really. Gen 1 is really no different than any other 24-hour um, period where the uh, earth does a complete rotation, but it's a time where we all stop and say, what did I like? What did I not like? What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish in 2023? And so we have a scripture to help us think about that, and then we each prepared some thoughts. And uh, so um, let's start off with our, our, our scripture, and we'll see how it goes. And I will, I'll moderate this and if we're going a little too long, I'll chop a question off or two, <laughs> and, and we'll just see how it goes. So um, this is a passage that comes from um, Jesus' famous teachings, or, or some think a collection of teachings, called the Sermon on the Mount, and it's found in a couple different places. In the Bible, we chose the Luke 6 uh, spot. Uh, uh, Luke's, Luke's version is a little more condensed, and... Um, so if you have a Bible and want to follow along, this is Luke 6, 46 to 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who hear, comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it, com it collapsed and its destruction was complete. It's a nice little metaphor. <laughs> Say goodbye to 2022 and hello to 2023. So uh, um, maybe we'll just... Uh, let, let, let's just go around the table here, and uh, Heather, you want to kick us off? And um, when you've been uh, musing over this passage, mm -hmm. what are some things that have come to mind? Well, first, it became a favorite passage of mine uh, in 2020. Okay. Because it helped me to stay grounded in all the chaos and all the noise that 2020 brings. And so I, have, I really do love this verse. And as I was thinking about it again yesterday, it struck me. Because I always like to look at a verse and just, what else could it be telling me? And the question that came up to me is, how do you know if your house is built on sand or on rock? Mm. How, do you, how do you know? We might think we know. We might think, I'm definitely on rock. You know, Jesus, Jesus is my guy. And, you know, you come to church and you read your Bible and you pray. And then you get on the highway and you're a complete um, not nice person. You saw me yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they had it coming, that's all I know. Right? So in, 
in going with this metaphor, I thought, okay, so if you're standing in your house and you're looking out, what is your view, right? So if your view is you're looking out and you are judging others or you're judging yourself or you're feeling shame or you're impatient and you're angry or whatever, what do you think you're built upon? Are you, are you a follower of Christ? Are you listening to his words? Are you heeding his words? Or do you have some more digging to do? And if you're on a house that is built on rock, the experience can be very different. You know, you could look out and no matter what the circumstances are coming at you, you can find peace, you can find comfort, you can find love. And to me, that was a real telling way to kind of do a check on yourself. Mm. You know, we can, we can say, oh yeah, um, Jesus is my everything and I am grounded on him. But then you need to check your behaviors and your thoughts and how you're conducting yourself. And I, I say we all have to keep digging. We, I mean, we might hit rock, <laughs> <laughs> um, but every, every house has a different foundation and it really, what's the telling sign of it is when the storms come in and the circumstances come in. How are you going to handle those when everything's based on what you're built upon? and doing a, a check. So I, I just thought it was a good way of, for me personally, just to do a check on myself. Where am I at? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you know, at points in my life I've been built on a uh, rock and I've sort of picked up the house and moved it over to sand. <laughs> so like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how far we have to go with this metaphor or how far we have to dig into the rock, but I think I'm constantly letting sand drift up mm -hmm. under and uh, kind of doing the, uh, the uh, yearly cleaning and getting some of that sand out of the way. Like if you've ever gotten sand in anything, you know what I'm talking about. It, you, you know, it's, it's, worth the, it's worth the task. So it, it's interesting that the, the, passage uses, the passage uses two different verbs. Um, the second word is, um, is that, uh, you know, if, if you're not built on the foundation, it'll fall down with great crash, right? And so it'll fall, it'll crumble, it'll be destroyed. Um, and that's the thing that if you build on um, stone, if you build on the foundation, a solid foundation, your house will, will survive. And of course, your, your house is you, right? You get that in the metaphor. Well, so, but the other uh, verb, it's a reso verb, which means basically to rend. So this is the imagery that Jesus is using is he has, he has this water rising and it's rending and tearing at the house. And... The important bit with that is that whether you're built on sand or you're built on stone, that's going to come. Mm -hmm. Both of those people groups experience the tearing and the rending of the hardships of this world. And so it's just interesting to me that, you know, it's absolutely true that, that Christ promises that if we're built on the, the firm foundation, which is him, um, there's a part of us that will survive those struggles. But there's a part of us that's going to get torn up, too, that this is a hard world to live in. And you, you were talking about what's the test? How do you know if you're, if you're living on the sand or on the rock um, when you're being torn? Are you being torn down completely? Yeah. Or is it just something that, you know, I think, you know, Paul talks about this. Um, we who follow Christ, we who know that God loves us, when we lose people, when we lose friends, family, we mourn. But we don't mourn as people without hope. You know what I mean? Like there's parts of us that are going to be okay, that know that we're going to be okay no matter what the, the storm is. So, you know, this, this passage in both Luke and Matthew uh, show up in, um, in parts of the Gospels where Jesus is telling, uh, telling his followers what the kingdom of God is like, this idea of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And when you read kingdom of God, uh, another way you could read that is family of God what it's like to be in the family of God. And so he's got a lot of great words to share with us, these words that we're supposed to be building our lives on. And it's things like, I love the poor, and I love the poor in spirit. I love the meek. Um, I love peacemakers. I love it when people are trying to make peace in my family. And, you know, you know I think, you know, when, when we think about building our lives on Christ, Yes, we build our lives on Christ, but that's not exactly what the passage says. What the passage says exactly is those who build their lives, their houses on these words of mine, who listen, 
and who try to live the life that I'm, I'm, I'm offering to them, one of peace, um, one of meekness, um, and, and one where you are valued. And uh, yeah, so we're going to, I think we're going to talk about this eventually, but boy, I would like to do that more yeah. in my life. Mm. Uh, I took a slightly different approach, um, like really just thinking about the social, um, like personal social impact of this verse. And uh, when, when I initially read it, I thought of, there, there's been a lot of like hurricanes and floods in mm. 2022. And, you know, uh, you see it on the news and, and whether it's Florida or other places, you, you see a completely wrecked house. And uh, when you see that, you've got to feel bad for the tenants. You're like, dang. And then you, I always think of, um, like what did they like what valuables did they save what did they pull out what would I pull out and all that stuff but when you see the flattened house and uh, you know the shards of wood and the rubble and everything uh, it just makes you feel bad and uh, but it doesn't make you feel as bad as the person whose house it is right mm -hmm. um, and so that's the kind of dynamic I felt uh, and it came to mind when I was reading reflecting on this passage um, and it made me think of um how faith is a win-win um, um, proposition. proposition. Thank you. Uh, faith is a win-win proposition. I finally get to add words <laughs> to my sermon. Yes. I do this under my breath all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you shout it, and, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Um, a win-win proposition, because uh, if you experience God, God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness, all those good benefits, uh, it personally makes you feel good, gives you peace, helps you out. Um, but it's, it, it, it then, um, it's not supposed to stop there. And the win-win comes, we benefit uh, from God's love. And then when we act on and follow God, um, we benefit even more because we bring that, that love and grace around us. So even when we're following God, we win. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's, it should be like this flywheel that begins to pick up momentum because as we receive God's love, we can't help. It's hard to feel completely forgiven one moment and then, uh, tell someone to go to H-E double hockey sticks because they wronged you the next. Mm -hmm. It really is hard to do that. When you feel the weight of your, uh, brokenness and wrongs removed, it's hard to really strangle someone, uh, with theirs. And so as you follow God's lead um, and uh, extend what's been extended to you, uh, you benefit. And it, it, it's great. And that flywheel is, I think, the mechanism that God uses to change the world, to, to change first a person, then change a family, then change a neighborhood, a workplace, change a community. Uh, and um, Lord willing, although it never looks like it'll happen in our day, change it. <laughs> it's, 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 Change, it change more than we can can imagine. You know, right? it's interesting that he does use like the uh, the imagery of houses, and that he 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 the metaphor is that we are houses. Of course, houses are places where you invite other people in, mm -hmm. you know, and and start to be a, a blessing to the community. Give other people a place to crash, other people a place to gather to have a meal, and uh, and you know, th th I mean that's not the main point of that passage, but it's definitely like a subcurrent that uh, the people that God. God blesses, uh, turn around and become a blessing. Yeah, yeah so let me uh, take that metaphor of the um, um, smashed house. We feel bad for the smashed house. The person whose house was smashed feel bad. And, and, and uh, let's make us the house, right? So when um, storms rise and, and we just give in to our worst human nature, we feel bad. And guess what? Everyone around us, our relatives or our coworkers, <laughs> see our uh, toxic behavior and it doesn't make them feel good, right? So it's a lose-lose. The flywheel works in reverse. But, the, but if we could spin it and the torrents rise and uh, we don't respond the way we would typically respond, we actually lean into that love, grace, mercy, forgiveness that we've received, then, um, then we begin to act at, um, in a way that multiplies blessing instead of multiplies toxicity. And it made me think of, and, and uh, um, I'm going to give a shout out to a friend of mine, Joan Paravicini, who made me think about this. And Peter, can you call up that image of the stained glass window? So, uh, mm. yeah. 
He's pretty. Uh, stained glass windows are, I think, a good metaphor for this metaphor. And you know I love <laughs> stacking yeah, metaphors, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> and so um, a stained glass window uh, it helps two different types of people. It helps people inside the church, right? Because it, um, you, uh, th they actually used it in a very, uh, w w before literacy was a big deal, they, they used stained glass windows to teach the love of God and the beauty of God. And um, when the light shines in there, you almost can feel, feel the glory of God. We had, uh, uh, we all took a trip um, to uh, Austria, and we were in a cathedral from the 1300s, and the stained glass was amazing. And you'd look up at the ceiling and the painting, uh, you know, the gold gilded paintings acting like stained glass, and you just felt the sacred space like God, woo, uh, you know. <laughs> um, and so w the people inside the house experienced the goodness of the stained glass. But guess what? If you have any kind of light in the church at all, then anyone, regardless of their faith involvement, can experience the glow and the warmth and the message of the stained glass window outside the church. And so if someone's having a really terrible day and uh, feels incredibly alone, and they l they're walking by and they see this warm glow penetrating the stained glass and it's emanating um, a picture of God's love, you are not alone. That, that literally could cheer someone up who, has, uh, who, who, who maybe doesn't have any kind of practicing faith. And so um, um, this metaphor, <laughs> to go back and confuse us all, go back to the house <laughs> metaphor, um, this, when, our, when we are operating out more out of the firm foundation, um, even if we're getting slapped with the, the winds and the rain and our shingles are coming apart. Um, when um, we just hold on to dear life, clinging to the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God, um, we don't become toxic and then we don't spew toxicity and our lives actually become a stained glass window or a harbor for people to take shelter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love that imagery too of the stained glass uh, for, for this reason. You know how they make stained glass? They take glass and they break it. And so stained glass is made out of uh, you know thousands, uh, sometimes tens of thousands of pieces of broken, of brokenness. And I think that's a great mm -hmm. a sort of image for, you know, like we're talking about this house and how it how it gets torn and how it gets buffeted, and God can use um, our our shatteredness and turn it ag again into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking about the people that got their house flooded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, Heather. Like, where's She's the metaphor going with that? Are. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do for these poor people? Um, all right, let's uh, take a let's take a spin at okay. our first question, um, follow up question. So, uh, let's just talk real practical and let's look at um, heading forward into. Should we do the negative one first or the positive one? Do the negative one first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way we end on a positive Mine. note? You hate sure. that idea? Yeah. No, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. All right. Um, and be mindful of the time up there. See that? <laughs> what uh, are we shooting for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> you guys are here. You're not leaving, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Our viewing, our viewing uh, <laughs> yeah. streams are going After down. After the third hour. <laughs> we were never My trending. My mom's still on, and that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's start negative. Um, 2022. You, you had some uh, ways of looking at life, some behaviors, some actions that you would love to put away and not bring with you. Um, it, it, you can name them if you want to, or you can name the mechanism in which you're... Uh, Again, keep, keep note of time. Yeah. <laughs> you want us to go along so you don't have to say anything? Yeah. <laughs> no, keep going, Cliff. Yeah. Uh, if you're comfortable naming it, name it. If you're comfortable just talking about uh, removing something, yeah. um, mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. Can, can I go first? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah I think uh, anger is probably one of my big things I'd love to get rid of. Um, you know, and, and not just anger, but the things that caused the anger in the first place. So um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I love to tell myself very evil, terrible things. Just inside my head. I try not to say these things, these crazy things out loud. Um, uh, I leave all that joy for myself in my own personal life. And I think, you know, just stopping that voice would be like such a huge, 
thing, you know, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. Those who build their words, uh, build their lives on my word. And so listening to Christ's words and not to Cliff's words. You know what I mean? Like, God has good words for me. He has good ideas for how to better live my life. And I think so often I trust myself and I trust my own wisdom and I trust my own voice mm -hmm. and I'm not and I'm not listening to God. And so I think on the negative side, I'd really love to get me to shut up a little bit mm -hmm. for this coming year. You know, or at least if, if not, if not be quiet, maybe if I could try to share more living words with myself, yeah. you know, rather than the the angry words, uh, the hurt words. Yeah. Yeah. Made me think words become stories, stories become patterns. And yeah. Patterns that ruin your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go? Sure. Um, so uh, when I was thinking about this passage and this, uh, I, I, um, I didn't want to list a, uh, uh, a specific thing, but I have a collection of things that, um, that I, I wouldn't mind not. Tell us. <laughs> tell us. Exactly. <laughs> what does the senior pastor say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, I, I wanted to talk about more... Um, in some respects, I have no problem with the foundation passage, right? This is, I'm not being, <laughs> you'll see why this isn't cocky in a second. I have a more problem about caring uh, about the house that's building on, build, built on the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. So ever since I became a Christian, when I really went from this, uh, I, uh, I, you know, experiencing God's love and then claim it, it from like own, like, all right, I am going to, this is going to be my way of life moving forward. That happened to me, uh, you know, in my uh, late teens, early 20s, but it was a, a watershed moment for me where I just started uh, on, that ident uh, on, on that pathway and I never looked back. I just said, all right, if either I'm gonna believe it's true or not, and I've had enough experience and enough uh, uh, looking into it from an academic standpoint where I believe it, so I'm gonna believe it, end of story. And that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> 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 and so, uh, uh, I'm fortunate, yeah. Yeah, uh, many, many things are floating <laughs> through my head right now that I will keep <laughs> for the sake of my family. And uh, um, so all that to say is I do not have an identity in Christ issue. Um, I believe to my core that despite um, maybe sound judgment, God loves me and uh, will never give up on me and ne never leave me alone. And because of that, I'm a combination of awesome because he made me and loves me. And I'm a combination of awful and I'm not finished yet. And so I really uh, have a, an easy time being anchored to that foundation. And it helps me through a lot of storms. And, and some of you guys and some of you guys out here have seen me go through a bunch of storms where I don't get tossed and turned because of that identity. Now, however, that identity sometimes sabotages me. And I don't care if the roof blew off. I'm fine. God's with me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I want to care more of what's above the foundation. <laughs> and Let's keep the roof on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and so I actually want to lean into uh, some of the things that uh, would, would help me be more colorful stained glass um, that sometimes I think... Um, um, I may sound weird sometimes. I think my, my, how I cling to my faith sabotages. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to combine my two answers. Okay. Um, but a few years ago, I was really struggling on the trust front. Mm. I had a few circumstances come my way that did rattle me. And I was out with some people who said they were picking words for the next year. And it was going to be their theme words. And I think Ooh, one of them was idea. adventure. The other was connectedness. And I went home that night, and I'm like, I should pick a word. And the word that came to me is not the word that I wanted, which you know is your right word. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the word was trust. It was like mm -hmm. I had lost trust in the people around me, those circumstances. Therefore, I lost trust in myself. Am I a good, you know, can I make good judgments on people and their character? And ultimately lost trust in God in that way. So I declared trust my word for the year. And I had a, I memorized a verse that went with that trust. I, I got a bracelet said the word trust. I hung something by my door. And I will tell you that by the end of that year, I can't explain how or why except through God. 
that that um, problem with trust, trusting myself, trusting others, trusting God, evaporated. Mm. Um, so I was thinking about this year, and it's been, a f it's been fun talking to people. I have a small group. Shout out to my small group. What's up? Um, we've been talking about picking a word, um, and we've done that through discussions. It's not like I'm going to pick this word. I had someone say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick, not in my small group outside of a friend, say, I'm going to pick acceptance. And I'm like, well, that's an easy way out because you're really good at acceptance. <laughs> how, about, how about something a little different? And we landed on a different word. But the word that you choose has to sting just a little. Yeah. And any word you choose, any word ultimately goes back to your relationship with God if it's, the good, if it's a good word. So we're talking about God's word. And now I'm saying declare a word. And so this year, what I want to leave behind, the word I've chosen is surrender. Oof. Now, when I told my Ooh, nephews and my trust. son, yeah. a deep trust deeper in trust. action, they're like, yeah. that's weak. That's, <laughs> um, and, and yes, you could, you could say that the word surrender seems like, but I'm submitting to a higher authority yeah. and that is my God. And I think I've led my life with a sword in my hand, ready to fight, ready to protect, you know, because I need to take care of everything. And so the imagery I have is putting that sword down and taking up his shield mm -hmm. and just surrendering. So it's been hard to find things with words with surrender on it. Yeah. So I, I wanted to tell you that I did find a plate, like this in North, um, I think it's Attleboro, there's a Christian store there, and they'll print your word on a wristband. Oh, um, man. So I have the, the word surrender on mine, and uh, that's what I want to I bring in. What are people who just see you walking around town going to think? I, I, <laughs> I, I hope they ask. Whoa. I hope they ask. She, yeah. <laughs> is she telling me to? or <laughs> Maybe she's an <laughs> MMA fighter or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 exactly. I'll be driving, and instead of getting mad, I'm just going to put my bracelet up. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm hoping, I'm hoping to leave behind. And I want to encourage people, if that speaks to you, find that word. Share it with me. I'd you love know, to You know what's love interesting it. is that uh, you want to worry more about whether the roof's on the house, and you want to worry less about whether the roof's on the house. <laughs> a good team. This is, this is what we and have to put up Are you angry about that? <laughs> yeah, are super. you angry? Yeah. Okay. Give me something to throw. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at. 2023, I'm sorry. I love that idea of having yeah. a word. I, you know, if uh, if any of you are thinking about having a word and you wanna you wanna find one that hurts just a little bit, consider forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's one that nobody likes. I know. Yeah. We ended on a happy note, right? We did. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you did combine it and yeah. transitions yeah. us in uh, 2023. When you talk about what you want to shed, it also implies what you want to begin yeah. doing, and yeah. so. Uh, but if you want to add a practice, a behavior, a mindset. Mm -hmm. um, in, in 2023 that you're hoping to adop adopt, what is it? I would say the word that comes to me is pause. You know, I think we react to things so quickly and circumstances so quickly. And if you don't take a minute to pause to invite God into that, um, yeah, it can be reckless and it can sweep you right away. And yeah. so I have tried to make a practice of that um, and not react uh, in my default ways and really make, make space for him to speak into my life and to my circumstances. Yeah. I think the practical thing for me, I, I've already alluded to it, is thought replacement. So mm -hmm. it's, you really, it, uh, nature abhors a vacuum, as you know, and so it's not good enough that you remove bad thoughts. You need to replace those thoughts with something, right? And so, I mean, and again, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about, is uh, filling ourselves with his word. And I think, you know, when, when I have those bad thoughts, when I'm having those struggles, to ask myself, are, what are you saying, God? You know what I mean? Like, you know, the world says this, or my heart says this. What do you say about that? And so, you know, I think, uh, you know, in the, in the passages that, that these verses point back to, right, because Jesus had been teaching for, for a solid period of time in, in both of these passages, um, and, and those are the particular words that he's thinking of. Um, you know, when, when, I, when, I ha when I feel hurt, blessed are the hurt. I mean, so you know the, you know, the, the Beatitudes. It, these, all these people who seem to be disadvantaged, right? these, these lame peacemakers who are always trying to 
you know, get people to hug one another. Well, yeah, it does seem a little bit lame until you realize that, wait a minute, I need people. And I need, I need peace in my life. And I need to start to, to here's a huge thing. It's like, I think, um, letting other people's voice into my head uh, as well. Like, letting uh, people who are close to me speak truth to me. I, you know, a lot of times when God's trying to talk to us, um, he's trying to do that through our friends, through our friendships. And especially me, who gets to work in the church, and I don't think we fully understand how big a blessing this is. Mm. Maybe not always a blessing, but... Get paid to pray. Yeah, what's <laughs> up? Um, but, you know, I mean, it really is pretty amazing to have uh, such positive people uh, there uh, day after day. I, and I probably take that for granted massively, for which I am, you know, apologetic. Um, but, yeah, I think so... Yeah, just thought replacement, just stopping when I'm saying something terrible to myself and saying, is that what God would say? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Let's hear something new. Interesting. Two thoughts so far is that those are connected, right? So um, somewhere before that initial thought occurs, you need to pause, stop, and pause let in. a new thing in, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I, I had a similar thing. Um, pause not to uh, thought replace so much, but... One of, the th um, one of the things I'm realizing as I grow older that there's a benefit to growing older. <laughs> uh, it makes you slower? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I've, I'm, I'm finally able to get a hold of some of my uh, neurobiological faculties in a way that I can conduct them a little bit better. Let me explain. So um, I've always, for like 20 years, always wanted to be more present in, in life. Uh, that's so hard to do. Yeah. That when you got the, uh, this thing strapped, well, it's in my back pocket, but you get a cell phone on you and it's going off and this appointment and this, and you got to get here and you're having this conversation, but you know what you want to get out of that conversation. So you have these expectations floating around and, and there's no room for, for being present. And so honestly, I, if, you, if we, we could go back 20 years and what you're, I'd love to be more present. Mm -hmm. Haven't been able to, uh, as I am growing older, I'm realizing that I can bend myself and bend my uh, ways more to be present. And so, um, so along with that pause, along mm -hmm. with that uh, stopping how the natural ways want to do things and, 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 and importing more st a strategic way, yeah. I would say my 2023 is uh, if I can up the ante. So when, uh, uh, so when I'm, t uh, you know, in the back talking to Mark, uh, I'm actually present and listening to Mark wants to say and knowing that uh, God is with us in that moment, even though it's a very mundane very regular, um, maybe even inconsequential moment. Mark's there, I'm there, God's there. And, uh, and trying, to, trying to take that e everywhere I go, yeah. re regardless. You know what's funny about Mike is that he's a closeted monk. He definitely, <laughs> he has loved the monastic uh, movement, like monastic life all of his life. And that's a very monkish thing to do, is mm -hmm. to just be present in the moment, to appreciate God in the moment, to, s to see God in the sowing of the seed and the cleaning of the dishes and the, you know, all those things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well that's why I went bald. I wanted to be more yeah. like a monk. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, last thoughts? I think speaking these things out loud, whether it's your small group of friends and telling them what your intention is, yeah. Um, and, you know, I loved hearing where you're at, Cliff. And, and so my, my follow-up question to you in the office would be, like, how can I help with that? Yeah. You know, what can I do with that? Hugs. So. <laughs> uh, <it>. Chocolates. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think one thing, I mean, it's worth saying just because it's, you know, January 1st, and how often do we get January 1st? You know, are there any commitments that we're willing to make towards these ends? I think one commitment I think I can make, and I know this is going to sound funny because I'm a pastor, but I don't think I, I read the Bible enough. You know, he's saying, you got to build your life on my words, on these living words of mine. And I think so often I lack the words of God in my head because I'm not reading them enough. I'm not spending enough time in that. So I think I'm going to try to commit to just spending more time in, in the Bible this coming year. Awesome. Um, Do you have any parting thoughts? I did, but it flew away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been able to know from the look in your eye. Yeah. Like, Where are we going? <laughs> Where, <laughs> where's the roof? <laughs> exactly. It's going to be all right. 
Um, how about I, how, shall I close this up in prayer and then we can move, uh, we get a, a, a few announcements. Sure. Um, actually, before that, um, let me wrap up in that saying that uh, um, I, I didn't plan this. We didn't sit around and say, how can we promote our next series? <laughs> but, but our next series is actually, um, maybe it just bursts out of our own hearts and what's mm -hmm. going on, but our next series is called Don't Do It. <laughs> and we literally have the Just Do It font, and uh, we're actually telling you Nike has got it. Nike has got it wrong, and so at least for spiritual life. And so uh, um, I think uh, we'll be touching... I, I'm pretty sure throughout that seven-week series, we're, we're hitting some of all that we were hoping for. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, and to help us, if you get the e-blast, um, we e-blasted a survey link. Um, and uh, it might be buried in there. Uh, did we it's not e-blast it? No, it's in there. I saw it. And okay, it's towards okay. the top. And we've had, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. We've had a couple take dozen that. answers. Yeah, please take that survey. So what we're going to do is hear all your answers and... Uh, we might bend some topics and, and maybe even create some series if there's a lot of, um, you know, if a if a, a, a topic emerges. Yeah. Okay. You want to pray? Yeah, let's pray. Okay. And then we'll do some announcements. And sure. then we'll have Jake come up. He's got a, a, another great song for us. And we'll close. Awesome. And they're after me again. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. And I am... Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm very, very thankful that your grace uh, comes, the, the scripture says every morning, but every moment, that every new breath, your grace is fresh, um, uh, helping us to turn from the things that hold us back, helping us turn to you and find more life. So I pray that um, 2023 would be a year marked of that for all of us where we can turn away from the things that harm us, find your grace, and um, be compelled towards the things that not only connect us more with you, but actually uh, uh, win for ourselves. I thank you for uh, my fellow pastors and staff members and for this congregation. Use us in, in um, noticeable ways, I pray, in, in this coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. Dude, that was a fire truck. Oh. What's a fire Burning department going to do to you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Heather. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just thinking about how God is so much working around us and through us and the fact that they, we don't plan like you said this, which is against who I am because <laughs> I want to make a plan. It. We did plan a little. The only plan they made is to dress alike. <laughs> yeah. And you well, left hey, me out. Look at his shirt. Look at his shirt. Red shirt. Uh, yeah. Mine's Boston Red Sox though. Yeah. Uh, they even didn't though plan they, it. They, they I'm didn't. slightly more holy than you because <laughs> mine is an NEC shirt. <laughs> but we have some things coming up that are a great way to, uh, to kind of kick off 2023, and we want to invite you into that. In fact, if you're in that place where I want to start digging for a little more rock, um, I want to introduce you, if you haven't heard, of what we call the Journey Series. Woo! Um, that Cliff and I've his, heard. <laughs> Cliff and I've his heard. team overseas. So we have Journey 101 that starts the second Sunday of every month. And this is an opportunity, a small group experience where you get to ask questions about God, the Bible. It doesn't matter if you've been coming to church forever or you're brand new. This is something we want to invite absolutely everyone into. Yeah. And then we're also starting uh, Journey 201. So if you took 101, we invite you to 201, which starts January 8th with the great Laura Laird. And this what? is called, we call it Embrace. You go a little bit deeper. Uh, you, you start off um, where 101 ended. So if you have questions, did I take 101? <laughs> um, <laughs> let me know. I can, I can find out for you. If you're not sure, maybe just take it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, people know. Uh, yeah. So, um, so we invite you to uh, sign up for that. It's uh, just going to be an, a and great Laura's experience. And Laura's an amazing uh, group leader. So good. something. Yeah. Is she here? I don't want to give her any she compliments. Oh, well, <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> um, another opportunity to tell you about, we have an, an amazing ministry that started one year ago called Celebrate Recovery. Uh, this is for people who have hang-ups, hurts, habits that they want to break free from, and they want to do it in a community. And that's every Tuesday night here at NEC at 6.30. And so if you're curious about it, if you're wondering how this is different or how it's similar, 
they are having a one-year anniversary party on January 10th, I believe it is, mm -hmm. at 6.30. So if, you're, if you've been involved, if you're curious about it, this is an opportunity to come and, and hear from their great group of people who, um, who have really helped our community, and we're grateful for the ministry that they do. So. And plus, I made that QR code. How awesome is that QR code? Oh, yeah. CR. I mean, it's not Very easy nice. to do. You see how I put the CR in the middle? You know, but and, and Mike, you mentioned it, but the series coming up next Sunday is Don't Do It. I think we have the logo that's coming up now, which is very clever. But really, um, you know, the way you've described it to, to me and to us is, you know, we have this busyness in life that we feel like we need to do everything. And essentially, you're saying, hey, pause. Let God bring out the best in you. Mm -hmm. um, take, take a minute uh, and not feel like you have to be on the go all the time. I think we should make a t-shirt out of that. That don't would be don't, don't do, do it. Do it. <laughs> we'll you do an upside down swoosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as in everything, you can find stuff on the website too. But we, we invite you to get engaged in any way you want to. And if you have any questions, definitely just let us know. All right. Jake, I'm going to hand this off to you and turn my mic off so I don't sing with you. Mm -hmm. right, how, how do you all feel about standing, first of all? Uh, join me in singing and great are you, Lord. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Fantastic. Um, well, go with this blessing, okay? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face sh shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year.